Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, I've had a delivery from Hobby King. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, they uh, put a video up showing that they've got their new Pulse Jet engines in, and I uh, just had to have one. I've never had one before, and uh, the price was uh, pretty cheap, so I thought, well, why not? So uh, uh, I ordered it straight away. As soon as I saw that video, I watched it and ordered it straight away. The video was only on a couple of views, so I thought, well, I'm probably one of the first to have uh, placed an order. Uh, but unfortunately, it's taken quite a few weeks to get here, and I've seen other people getting theirs, like Bruce on the uh, X Jet channel and uh, yeah so let's uh, get this opened and we'll have a look inside and see what we've got as you can see I did buy a couple of extras while I was buying from the International Warehouse just two uh, U 12 volt UVEX and uh, a 5 volt one uh, they will be for powering gimbals and that will be for charging GoPros so here it is in its uh, very retro box Get it the right way around. I like the uh, the look of the retro box. It looks like this has been up in someone's attic for quite a few years. Even the box is made to look aged and stuff. So uh, let's open her up. Oh, it's already open. Got tape on it here for some reason, but it's uh, not serving any purpose. There we go. Now, straight away you can see that the quality is not uh, as you would expect or at least once anyway it's very very bumpy and uh, as Bruce said it's also oval it's not circular you can see that this is shorter than this distance very oval uh, the workmanship on here is uh, pretty shoddy please read instructions okay will do The, uh, the red anodized cap at the front seems quite nice. Doesn't seem to be locking in. Has that just broke off? I don't know if that's actually supposed to come off, but it has. Let's see. Maybe it's supposed to go on this outer ring here. Yeah. Just fits on there like so. But you can see uh, how bad the welds are on this. Although they tried to polish it all out, you can still see all the bumps inside this bag. Sort of brown paper, we'll have to read the instructions and see what that's for. Lock, whoop, large clamp, and two smaller clamps. Three large black screws, a bunch of small screws. Uh, that looks like the intake for the fuel or for the air. Brackets. The mounts, some more screws, more screws, and another spare spark plug. Our ignition system. I'll read the manual later. Pretty good, works well. Not sure where you would clip that second crocodile clip on here. So again, we'll read the manual and see what happens with that. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to take, yeah, 2 to 3 S LiPo. Uh, we've got our instruction manual, and that's it, just sort of a couple of bits of foam. So let's uh, take this uh, end cap off here. If I can, okay. You can just see the welding inside there. I'll take off this silver cap as well. So we've got our Allen key screw here which holds on this silver plate and in turn holds on the reed valve which are these uh, spring valves here. Let's uh, just pop these out so we can show you using a 5mm Allen key or hex. 
Whoa. Dropped a little silver washer. Seems to be a light bit of oil on there. And here's your reed valve itself. Which is stuck down actually. There we go. Stuck down with a little bit of oil. As you can see it's on there, the residue. So let's connect the 3S battery to this here and see if we can get our spark plug to ignite. So I've propped up the uh, jet engine here using the uh, pliers. Uh, I've connected the positive to the top and the negative onto the uh, pulse jet uh, uh, frame itself. So uh, I'm going to press the ignition and we'll see what happens. So there we can hear and actually see the spark coming from the spark plug which is going to ignite our fuel once it goes inside. It seems to be quite consistent. On our igniter here, just stuck to my tail, you can just see we've got a red light and we can shut it off immediately or start it up again if we want. So basically what this is doing is taking that 12 volt uh, battery which I've got on the here, free, free cell and uh, stepping it up, stepping up the voltage. I'm not too sure uh, what voltage it is because I haven't got a voltage reader. Well, I have, but I don't want to blow it up on uh, what I've got here. So uh, I'll leave that to somebody else to do. Um, it does say on here 20 kV, 20 kilovolts is that or something? Uh, but at the top, HV output, so high voltage output. So yeah, I don't really want to touch those uh, ends or uh, blow anything up. So uh, let's try that again just for fun. So uh, let's put this back together, we've got our reed valve here which is very very flexible and flimsy, I might have to uh, make some more of these, um, Hobby King does not stock them and these can last anything from 10 seconds maybe up to 5 minutes but if you're running it on a bench then it's not going to really last very long at all. We could actually run this for maybe 30 seconds uh, in total and uh, these reed valves will break. Okay, as you can see, I've now connected this piece in. Uh, what's gonna happen, our fuel line's gonna be connected directly in the center here, and then we're gonna blow air through this piece here, which is going to draw the air and fuel through the uh, reed valves and into this chamber, uh, which will be ignited then by the spark plug. Uh, this is gonna travel down here, uh, as it does that it causes a negative pressure, uh, that negative pressure is going to draw more air and fuel in, uh, ready for the next explosion. Uh, so the original explosion that travelled out, some will come back again and then ignite the next one. This is going to happen so fast, uh, between 220 and 245 cycles per second. So uh, as you can imagine this is going to get hot very quickly and it's going to be very noisy. Now if I clamp this down onto the bench and start it, I can only run it for up to 10 seconds at a time and then you have to let it cool down to room temperature. Those reed valves inside, you've got 10 uh, valves, uh, they will break very, very easily and as I said, there is no spares for them at the moment, so uh, I may have to make my own. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be putting this on a bench to test and make sure I can get it fired up first. Uh, I'm going to try using a uh, foot pump or a hand pump and see if we can get our 40 PSI to uh, get this ignited. So here's our little clamps here. And I'll clamp this down onto a piece of wood and uh, stick it on the vise and uh, we'll try and power it up outside. Uh, but that will come in a later video because I've still got to get the fuel tube and uh, make a fuel tank for it. Uh, the ultimate plan for this is to actually stick it on a uh, 4x4 RC car and uh, maybe see if we've got enough power to push us down the beach. So uh, that is the end plan of this. Uh, we'll see if we can get this to work. Hopefully that reed valve will uh, last long enough for us to do our testing and uh, also to put it onto the RC car and see if we can get some uh, a run down the beach. Uh, but yeah, that's it for now on this little uh, adventure. We will see what happens with this. Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, hopefully you are too. So uh, yeah, can't wait.